Hi, today I'm going to show you some toys I made, the little 3D printed characters that uh, I based on someone else's designs. So I'm going to show you his designs and then I'm going to show you basically how I crafted this little one, which is uh, posable, as you see, and then some other ones that are uh, just little figures. So thank you for choosing this video to watch. So, here's another one. Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna put these down on the ground or on the floor so you can see them clearly. So these are supposed to be uh, mandrakes, and uh, this one is kind of held together with wires. So I glued the wires at the tip of the root, and it goes through the body to the other tip. And the same thing with the, the other limb. And uh, these are fake leaves. So I made that size and I made another the little guy that runs. Even a little butt there. Let's just put these out. This was my first attempt and it didn't quite these are the, I, I printed out the segments but i couldn't figure out how to get them to stick together so i just glued them together and he this one looks a little uh a little stiff but i like these little you can make them i made them tinier and tinier as you can with a 3d printer so let me show you the drawings that uh, Nick made. And here's the website you can find his work on. It's Etsy. And if you want to find his work, just type in the word Mandrock in the search field and you'll find his page. You'll see even his logo is that little mandrake that he created. So he basically just draws pictures and prints them out and offers them for sale here on the internet. This one is the one that uh, I just fell in love with. It's a bunch of little mandrakes on uh, floating islands. And <laughs> I don't own this one yet, but I've got my eye on several of them. He does work in various styles and formats like this one. And uh, there's so many I'd like to share with you. But just for one, let's start with the King Arthur cat with its rich textures and uh, colorful characters. This, this is my advertisement for Nick. So if you like his stuff, go on to Etsy and buy some. But I went on to Nomad Sculpt, which is an application you use to create 3D models. And what I wanted to do was create that 3D model of his Mandrake. So Nomad Sculpt is one of the many 3D modeling programs you can find. I chose this one because it was the easiest for me to learn quickly. There are more robust ones, there are simpler ones too. Uh, this one also fit on my tablet, and that's why the screen flipped to portrait view suddenly. Anyway, I just wanted to show you a few seconds of what it looks like on the screen when you're trying to manipulate these forms. I just take a simple shape from their library and manipulate it. It's really intuitive. I think most of these programs are like this, where you can just take a shape and mush it around and crease it with one tool and bend it with another, move it around so that you can actually visualize what this object would look like in reality. And very quickly, this environment becomes your reality and this thing actually feels like a piece of clay that you're sculpting. So that was my plan. I wanted to create the figurine first so I could understand the proportions and then use this file as the basis for creating all the different segments that I could reassemble later as a, a toy, a puppet. And here are a couple products of that process. They're two different figurines. They, they have slightly different poses and in slightly different scales. Uh, painted white and then you'll see the posable version which you can see in between the joints there the gray of the resin I painted it after I assembled it so I also wanted to show you 
just a, a slice of the process of creating these segments. I went on to Tinkercad to create these uh, using their library of simple objects. So I used the cylinder to make the segment, the ball to make the ball of the shoulder, and an invisible ball to make the socket that the next one would fit into. And I also used an invisible tube to make the hole that the wire would run through. And I also used a cone and a ball to make the end of that root. And I used little invisible tubes to make the path through which I could feed a wire. Actually, my plan at first was to use a nylon thread and then tie a knot in the end of the thread. And that didn't quite work, so I used a wire instead. And then I created sort of a raft and imported these into my 3D printer program along with the body and the head and printed them out. Now I'm just gonna speed through the assembly process because really the interesting part of it for me was seeing how tiny I could print these parts and all the little tubes inside all the little parts printed out perfectly so that I could fit this stupid nylon thread through. <laughs> I only tried that for a couple of them and finally decided I was gonna to to find a different solution. But I did get it through one and I wanted to show it on screen just so that you knew that it was possible if you ever tried it yourself. So here I am trying to thread a tiny wire through a tiny tube with these giant sausage fingers. It's pretty amazing that I got it through. And I secured it by tying a knot but I also used this resin that's activated by UV light. And you'll see this on screen, but I'll go into it in greater depth later on in the video. Well, I didn't, uh, I didn't video the creation of this character because it was all sort of, I was making it up as I was going along. Here's the, the final version of this little guy, this little character. I'll paint it up. And I, basically, these are the 3D parts that I used for this. It's just, you know, large. And uh, instead of nylon, I'm using wire. And instead of running the, the, the arms straight through and the legs straight through, I'm running them up through the center of the body and out the top of the head. So I needed some way to make sure that the, 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 the wires didn't pull all the way through and, you know, I want to be able to hold it, hold it up like this and play with it. So, I got to this point and I've discovered something really interesting and I wanted to share it. So I might as well do this last bit on camera. So I just use these ribbons that it's been, I think it's been die cut in the shape of a vine. You can kind of see how it's just been probably uh, with a, a heated edge to kind of fuse the polyester fabric. And, uh, and it's been pressed down to make it look like it's been stitched. But it hasn't, it's just polyester. It's 100% polyester. So that's what I'm gonna put up here for the stems. And I'm just using this green yarn, cotton yarn, to wind around the, the wires. And uh, this is just how I figured out how to do this to make sure that the Make sure that the wires don't slip through. Just tie it off down here. And then... Okay, buddy, get down there. 
Then I use this UV resin, UV activated resin. So if you're not familiar, uh, resin is like epoxy and it doesn't harden until you expose it to ultraviolet light. So I have this flashlight that is, did that go on? Yeah. That's UV and it's specifically the wavelength that this needs to activate the hardener. So I just put a little drop on this fiber. If I can get it down there. And the directions say to uh, expose it for two minutes, at least two minutes. But I find that it's very quick. And um, I probably should not expose my hands to it too much, <laughs> but I sometimes get, get my hands exposed. It's not the healthiest thing to expose yourself to. Intense wavelengths of ultraviolet light but it makes this harden very quickly and it's kind of like um, I use it this this method because it's it's like super glue but I can work it I can use it and work it in as much as as long as I want and then expose it whereas super glue you really have just a few seconds or you know it depends on what kind of super glue you use but this 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 way I have all the control I need. So I just expose it just a little bit and it's it's already it's already hard. Hard as a rock. So by the way I am using a personal protective equipment. So, the interesting thing that I discovered, which I forgot to mention, which you probably have already seen, is that this stuff, these leaves, are, are they fluoresce a little bit in the UV light. I thought that was really cool. So, if that didn't show up, I was so focused on getting this done that I forgot to, to show off the UV qualities. So, as soon as I tie this off, I'm gonna turn off the lights. And, uh, and do some UV, UV play. <laughs> Alright? All sorts of stuff is fluorescent that you wouldn't suspect. And as soon as I got this thing, I went around my house shining it on every surface. And uh, I was really pleased and surprised. Gosh, look how bright that is. It's like a mithril. So, yeah. I'm probably going to do that for you just uh, to end this segment. So I'm just going to show you some interesting things that you can see with your <laughs> UV light. Looks like someone's fingerprints here on the wall and a place where there's a patch and little kids fingerprints. I just moved into this place and um, this is not visible to the naked eye. So. <laughs> 
This is what I'm going to be cleaning. And also, this is something I made myself. If you haven't seen my previous videos where I used this uh, synth feather sizer, that's what this is. And just that one single feather is glowing. That was a big surprise to see that. Uh, oh yeah, here's something interesting. Ooh, look at that. <laughs> so there is one other thing I just found so interesting. What the heck is this? I'm in my kitchen right now. And these are my cupboard doors. Something is just splattered there. It's under the paint too. Just to show you that it's completely invisible to the, in regular light. I'll turn on the lights right here. See? Nothing. Alright, now back to Mandrakes. <laughs> 